Chapter 23. Home sweet home were the only words on Matt's mind as he walked into his bedroom. He felt the warm, lush carpet between his toes and smiled at the sight of his big, comfortable bed. He reached in his backpack, pulling out the thick green book, Adventures in History. As Matt began to turn the pages, he found himself distracted. His eyes began drifting around the room, finally coming to rest on the silent air conditioner that sat in one of his windows. He walked over to the air conditioner and turned it on full blast. Its soft hum was music to his ears. What about music? Matt grinned and placed a tape in his tape deck and turned up the volume. Everything sounded and felt so good. Suddenly, he remembered his reading lamp. He reached over to the wall and flipped the lamp switch. When the light came on, Matt whooped with joy. He felt the thrill of excitement as he turned on his clock radio. He even set the alarm to go off. And TV, Matt cried, racing over his television set. I'm going to watch TV. By the time Mrs. Carl... Carlton appeared in the doorway. Matt was sitting on his bed, reading after turning on every electrical appliance in his room. What on earth is going in, on in here? His mother called over the din. Matt looked up from his book and grinned. I was just checking to make sure that everything still works, he told her. Mrs. Carlson shook her head. Come and get yourself some breakfast, she told Matt. And for heaven's sake, take a bath and change your clothes. As she walked away, Matt could hear her mumble under her breath. The way that boy looks after a simple backyard camping trip, you'd think he was she was he was just through a war. That night at the supper table, Matt took a seat across from Katie. Before he could stop her, Katie reached for the sugar bowl and opened the lid. The corner of her lips turned up as a sm smile slowly spread across her face. She dipped two of her little fingers in the bowl, touching the sugary green peas that were still there. Katie, stop that right now. Put the sugar bowl down and finish your supper. Mrs. Carlton said, in her way to the table, Matt watched as Katie made a face and reluctantly put the lid back on the sugar bowl. Mr. Carlton was anxious to hear all about the campout. So how was your adventure? He asked. Anything exciting to report? Matt shot Katie a look as she was about to reply. We had to keep the club meetings a secret, Matt answered but before Katie could say something. Well, they must have had some excitement, Mrs. Carlton said, shaking her head. Their clothes were in shreds. Where were Tony's parents? Weren't they any grown-ups looking after you? Just the general, Katie said truthfully. The general? Mr. Car Ter Carlton looked suspicious. Matt groaned and closed his eyes. General George Washington. Katie grinned. He even gave me his socks. Mr. and Mrs. Carlton looked over to Matt, waiting for an explanation. I should have known that she wouldn't be able to keep a secret. Matt thought as he st sat squirming in his chair. Now I'll have to tell them everything. The truth is, he began, we were sitting around the campfire reading this book about George Washington, the Revolutionary War, and I remember doing the same kind of thing when I was a little boy, Mr. Carlson interrupted. He sat back in his chair and smiled. We went, we would pretend that we were actually living in a different times, as if we were really there. It's a great way to use your imagination. So what are you planning for the club's next adventure, he asked. Well, I'm not sure, Matt stammered. I've got some reading to do first. So you ended up with George Washington socks, did you? Mr. Carlson smiled over Katie. Weren't they a little big for you? They were real big, Katie told him. So I traded them for some marshmallows. Well, that was a good trade. I probably would have done the same thing, Mr. Carlson looked over to Matt and winked. And guess what, Dad? Katie cried. I'm a club member now, too, because I found the boat. Boat? Mrs. Carlson and I brushed out up. Oh, Matt, you didn't go anywhere near the lake, did you? You do realize how dangerous it is to play there without supervision. She turned to her husband. John, I told you they were too young for a camp out. And one of the soldiers, Katie continued, the nice one who saved me from the freezing ice hole, he got killed. But George Washington, he didn't get killed. What a wonderful imagination the child has, Mr. Carlton beamed at Katie. Franny, you worried too much. They were just pretending, like all kids do. Well, maybe you're right, Mrs. Carlson sighed. She looked at Matt and smiled. So which one of you was pretending to be George Washington, she asked. Oh, uh, well, Matt hesitated. Honey, I don't think Matt wants to divulge any more information, Mr. Carlson turned to Matt and whispered. Private club business, right, son? Something like that, Matt replied. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me, man to man, Mr. Carlson nodded. You did a fine job of looking out for your sister on this camp out. And I want you to know that I'm proud of you for including her. It shows that you're becoming a mature, responsible person. Uh, gee, thanks, Dad, Matt mumbled. 
Don't mention it, Mr. S Carlson smiled. Pass me the sugar, will you, son? 